All right, so I'm not sure what's going on with my stuff, but I will uh, go into there. So let's fit the width. All right, so I will get this going in from here. Hopefully you guys are ready. I do apologize, not sure what the heck is going on. No other questions though, so, hmm. all right. So let's uh, get on. All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen to Conic Sections quiz number one. Um, so what we're gonna do is just kind of go through the quiz and work through the answers. So the first example is given the directrix x equals negative two and a focus one zero, write the equation in standard form. Um, so again, this is going to be a parabola. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is plot our information. So at negative two here, we're dealing with that value and then a focus is at one comma zero. So this is kind of interesting um, because Remember, our vertex is always in between, right? So you could kind of count these up if you wanted to and then kind of like divide to figure out where it's at. So you could say like negative two, you know, plus one divided by two and you get negative one half, right? So your vertex is going to be at negative one half right there. So we could say the vertex is at negative one half and that's gonna be negative one half comma zero, okay? So um, that is going to be our vertex, um, but now we need to be able to figure out P. Now we also know that this is a horizontal parabola, so automatically I'll just write the equation. So this is Y minus K, quine squared equals 4P times X minus H, all right? Okay, so now we gotta figure out 4P. So basically you gotta say, well, how far is it? Well, from here to here is one and then plus one half, right? So one plus one half is equal to three halves, okay? So that's gonna be your value P. So I have Y minus zero, oops y minus zero equals four times three halves times x plus, well, let's write it all out, a minus a one half, oops, come on, minus a negative one half, okay? So that's a y squared equals, well, four times three is 12, divided by two is going to be a six times x plus one half, and voila, there we go. All right, next equation says, write the equation of the circle in standard form and identify the center and the radius. Okay, so again, you can see here, we have an equation where we're gonna want to um, get the x's and the y's together. So we'll have a x squared plus eight x um, plus a y squared minus eight y is equal to 36, okay? So here, again, we're just gonna complete the square. So we're gonna take the middle term b divided by two and square it. And hopefully you see here, we have an x squared plus eight x plus 16 and then plus a y squared minus eight y plus 16 equals, and then this is going to be a 36. Now, where we're doing one side, we have to do on the other side, and that's actually supposed to be a negative. No, it's not supposed to, yeah, it's supposed to be a negative. Um, so that's gonna be plus 16 plus 16. So I'll have to change that, make that a negative, okay? Um, so therefore, that's going to be 32, and no, that's not supposed to be a negative. Hmm, what was I supposed to do? I guess we'll just add this up. So I guess we'll keep that positive. I can't remember, I was trying to get that to be 32. Oh, I guess that's supposed to be a negative 28. Hmm. Eh, let's just go and see it up there. That's fine, we'll just leave it at this. So therefore 36 uh, plus 32, so that's going to be a 68. Eh, I don't really wanna do that. So let's, yeah, let's change this. So I'm gonna change this to a, um, let's say a negative 28, negative 28. Okay, so therefore, we'll have a negative 28, right? And so therefore that's gonna be positive 32 plus negative 28. This can be factored into an x plus four quantity squared plus a y minus four quantity squared. And then that's gonna equal a four. So my center is gonna be negative four comma four, but my radius is not gonna be four. My radius is gonna equal two because remember the standard form of the um, circle is going to be um, r squared. All right, the next equation says, given the equation of an ellipse, um, identify the center, the vertices, and the foci. Okay, so remember the ellipse always has the larger term. Um, a squared is always larger than B squared, right? And whatever A is under the X, or whatever is under the, whatever A squared is under, that's gonna be your um, a major axis. So we can say here's A squared and here's B squared, right? So you can see A squared again 
is going to be under the x. So I have a horizontal major axis. So I'm trying to write, uh, I already know the equation, but we know this is going to be a horizontal. So I'm just gonna put an h here, all right? Um, now we know the center is going to be zero comma four. So let's go and plot that. Okay, because a lot of this you can just do on your on, in your head. So if we have zero, four, one, two, three, four, right? So that's gonna be my center. Now, my vertices are just gonna be, so if a squared is 25, that means a is equal to five. So we're just gonna go to the right five and to the left five. So one, two, three, four, five. That's one vertice and one, two, three, four, five. That's my other vertice, right? So we can say the vertices, those are going to be um, plus or minus five, comma, not zero, shoot. Plus or minus five, comma, four. Okay, and then remember what's also on that same side of the vertices of the major axis, all right, right? We have a horizontal major axis. That's gonna be my foci. So that is going to be a distance of C. Now again, we don't know C, right? So we're gonna to have to say that A squared minus B squared is equal to C squared. Well, 25 minus four is equal to C squared, 21 equals C squared. So we could say equals the square root of 21. So that's gonna be plus or minus square root of one, 21 comma four. Okay, um, so we have the vertices, we have the foci, and then we have da, 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 vertices, the foci. What else we got? Vertices, we got the foci. Now again, like where is the foci, right? If you're gonna kind of like plot those, well, again, we know that you know four squared is 16, five squared is 25. So it's gonna be between somewhere between four and five, right? So it's gonna be like really, really, oh, sorry. Four squared is 16. Sorry, that's gonna be a distance of five. Yeah, four squared, so it's between four and five. So it's really, really close between those vertices. And then we're gonna have the co-vertices, which is going to be vertical. Um, and that's gonna be a distance of B squared. is equal to four, so B is equal to two, right? So therefore that's gonna be down two and then up two. Okay, and those are gonna be your co-vertices. Now, if you wanted to sketch the graph, which I probably should have added on that, right? Hmm, yeah, whatever. Um, so therefore your co-vertices are going to be at two. So that's gonna be at zero comma four plus or minus two, right? And then you could actually like simplify that, right? So um, we could go ahead and rewrite that as zero comma six and zero comma two. All right, so now let's go in, now let's say we're given the vertices, cove, or given the vertices, three comma five, three comma one, and the foci, three, six, and three, zero. Write the equation of the asymptotes and eccentricity. All right, so let's go and plot the information because if we're gonna identify the asymptotes, we need to know, is this a horizontal or is this a vertical um, transverse axis? I should explain of the hyperbola. even though you know it's asymptotes, so it's gonna be a hyperbola, but still. So let's go and plot this. So we have three, five, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, and then we have three, one. Okay, those are your vertices. And then we have the foci, which are at three, six, and three, zero. Okay, so we can see this is a vertical, um, we can see this is a vertical transverse axis. Okay, that's very important. So the center is gonna be in between them. Now you just gotta find the middle between either one of these points. So it doesn't really matter. Um, hopefully you kinda see between one and five here is going to be uh, three comma three. So the center is gonna be three comma three, right? And you could do any of one. You could do six plus zero divided by two. You could do five plus one divided by two. Either way you wanna think about it, you can see that the Y coordinate, that answer here is going to be two. Or I'm sorry, yeah, it's gonna be three. Right? So we have centers through three. Now let's go ahead and write in the asymptote equation. So that's gonna be y equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h plus k. All right, so we gotta figure out what our a and our b is. Now, given the vertices, we know the distance from the center to your vertice is going to be two. So the distance from the center to your vertice, so we could say a is equal to two, right? From three to five, three to one, that's two. Um, we know the distance from c the distance from the center to your foci is going to be three, right? So now we gotta figure out B. Well, again, A squared um, plus B squared equals C squared. So we have four plus B squared equals nine. So B squared is equal to five.
okay? Um, but again, it's important that we have b then equals the square root of 5, okay? So we have the square root of 5 there. Um, and that's going to be important because for our eccentricity, remember that's c over a, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and just plug it in for here. So we now know our a, so that's going to be plus or minus 2 over the square root of 5 times x minus 3 plus 3. And then we have our eccentricity, which is going to be a 3 over 2. And voila, there you go. And that was it, right? Yes, write the equation of the asymptotes and the eccentricity. Done. All right, the next one is classify the graph of the given equation as a circle parabola. So I recognize my a and my b. Um, so 4 times a negative 3 is less than 0. So that's a hyperbola. I should include that with that negative. The next one is you have a vertex of 1 comma negative 1 opens to the left with a focal width. So again, remember the focal width is 4p is equal to 18. So you can see those are all right there. So it's not that one. Um, a vertex of, so this is your, so it should be x minus 1, x plus y plus 1. Okay, so it opens up to the left. So if we know it opens to the left, it's not x squared, right? So it's not that one. Um, and then x, this should be x minus 1 right? And y minus 1, good. If it opens up to the left, that means it's going, that means the 4p has to be negative. So my answer is b, right? So it has to be a negative going that way. Um, all right, an ellipse with the intercepts plus or minus 3 and 0 comma 4 at the origin. Okay, so we got 0, 0. That's good. Um, so let's go and plot this. So we have plus 3, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Then 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you can see those are going to act as your vertices, right? So um, that's going to be 8. So you can see that the major axis here is that. So that's going to be 8. So that would be a is equal to 8. So a squared is equal to 64. So the largest number should be 64. So it's not these two. And since the 64, since it's horizontal, the 64 has to be under the x. So that's going to be answer b. Uh, question number eight, what is the equation of the circle centered at A passing through B? I forgot to change this question. I knew that was going to be. Um, crap. Okay, well, I, it's kind of embarrassing because at least I remember how I had to change it. I knew I, there was one I had to go and change. Um, da -da, so what answer do I want this to be? Well, I guess what I'm going to do is complete the square and I will pick, hmm, well, let's just go ahead and do one of these and then we'll see what the answer is um, and then we'll go from there. So let's do, I like this answer. So this is, yeah, x squared plus 8x plus a y squared minus 6y um, equals a negative 7. Okay, so that's going to be an x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus a y squared minus 6y, oops, plus 9. Yeah. Okay, plus 9 equals negative 7. Let's say plus 9 plus 16. So that's going to equal 18. So that'd be x plus, um, so that'd be x plus 4 quantity squared plus a y minus 3 quantity squared equals, and that's going to be a 18. Okay, with a centered, centered at a. So we're going to say that's going to be a negative 4 comma 3. Whew. All right, and then passing through the point B. So we have to go that crazy, passing through the point B. Um, hmm. So, let's see here. Um, if I did this as a negative one, zero, right? I think that would work. Um, because if you go through the passing the point zero, negative four, three, that would be your h and your k, and then you could plug those in to find r squared, right? Because if you plugged in negative one, that would give you a three squared plus a zero would be a negative three squared nine plus nine. So yeah, there we go. All right, so that's going to be your point, and the answer is b. And the way that you would do that is you would use this formula, x minus h, quantity squared, plus a y minus k, quantity squared, equals r squared, right? So we have our negative 4 and our 3, which is our vertex. So it would be x plus 4 
squared plus a um, y minus 3 squared equals r squared. Well, again, now you can plug in x, so for this negative 1. So you can plug in negative 1, oops, negative 1 plus 4 squared plus a 0 minus 3 quine squared equals r squared. And then what that will do is that will give you a r squared, which is equal to, um, and the r squared is going to equal a 18, right? So we could say that's going to be 3, so that'd be 9 plus 9 equals r squared. So r squared equals 18, So which is perfect. And then what you do is you would just go ahead and type it in there, and then you'd have to expand it and see which answer is which. So it's a little bit of work, but it's a good question. Because then you could just do, then you do x minus, what is it, x minus x plus 4 quine squared plus a y minus 3 quine squared equals 18. And then you have to factor it, expand it, and see which one it is, which is answer B. All right, for the next one, find the vertices and foci. All right, so the largest number is, I'm uh, sorry, this is a hyperbola. So the first number is always a squared minus b squared, right? So a squared is equal to 225 degrees. So therefore, a equals 15. B squared equals 400, so B is equal to 20. Now we know, let's go and find the vert, uh, the center first. Mm, ah, the crap, they're not giving it to us. All right, so we know that A is under X, so it's gonna be horizontal. All right, so you gotta make sure your X coordinates then are gonna be moving. So you can see how here the X coordinates are the same, so it's not A. Do you say these are the same? So it's not there. Now again, your A is 15. So from, what is my X coordinate? Negative two? So plus or minus 15, comma, negative four. So it should be what, a negative 17 and negative 17 and a positive 13? There you go. That would be the answer there, which is C, which is your answer there. All right, guys, that is it for your quiz. Hopefully that was helpful for you, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.